Wednesday Night Rugby on Off The Ball. With Vodafone, official sponsors of the Irish rugby team. Team of us. Everyone in. Now, welcome back. So as Richie mentioned in the news round, news confirmed by Six Nations organisers today, uh, the general map for the next couple of months, the men's Six Nations 2021 remains on schedule. It gets underway at the weekend of February 6th. Women's Six Nations postponed until early spring, summer, we're talking April, May territory. Only England are fully professional, France semi-professional, so that complicated bubbles and testing, so it was not possible, they felt. And World Cup qualification is still very much up in the air, so it's messy indeed on the women's front and then the men's under 20 postponed as well. And as we know, Heineken Champions Cup rounds three and four have been postponed. So that is the uh, theme of the news over the last while. Ronan O'Gar is with us, evening. Hi, Joe, how are you? Yeah, very well. I hope you're well too. I know La Rochelle from much of 2020 had done very, very well from speaking to you when it came to COVID cases and then suddenly last few days, a bit of a tornado sweeps through. Yeah, yeah, it's... Um, we're all in isolation, I suppose, in, back in our houses. Um, the training centre shut down and, uh, yeah, we had initially three cases which we thought... Uh, was uh, hopefully going to be the end of it and then retested again and now we had another five pros on top of that with 12 academy players with a member of staff so um, um, the French regulations kicked in and um, just enter the uh, uh, not allowed under any circumstances to go to the training centre not even to pick up your runners or anything like that for the players point of view so no hanging around with each other completely trying to I suppose, break all the um, connections among players and um, trying to get us back uh, safely and healthy as quickly as possible. So testing again in the morning and uh, we go from there. And so far, so good for you? You're okay so far? Yeah, yeah, I am, I am. Um, exactly. So I think we've I've been 26 times tested, I think. So, um, yeah, the nostrils suffer a little bit, but... Um, sure. It's uh, you prefer you prefer it like that because it's it's a very important um, because there are some nasty stories circulating as well in terms of people young and fit um, who have been put in ventilators. So I think this myth of that if you're fit and healthy and you're sporty you'll be fine. I don't think it necessarily. Um, I don't think that's the correct way of looking at it. Yeah, it's amazing. I suspect for households all over the country how quickly this virus goes from being well you've got a really good chance of being okay to very very scary when the reality of it lands in your vicinity yeah exactly i'm talking to a few people back home and um you know i mean it's it's touch and go for one or two people who are in their 20s and uh very very serious and very very sad so it's um you know i think for for people if they haven't realized at this stage you're 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 it's of utmost importance that you um, do the best you can to avoid getting it. And Ronan, in so much as it's possible for anyone to know how it got in there, is the general sense that it got, got in there via one player and that player gave it to everyone or could it be multiple sources bringing it into the place or is it possible to even know? I think there is an, an awful lot of research going on and we have a young doctor who's very, I suppose, um, forward thinking and, and he's looking at uh, a lot of different studies, but we've nothing conclusive because, you know, I think if in the Bundesliga, you can see, I think a few studies were produced and some teams there really struggled to regain form when their group got it. Uh, so naturally, you're trying to do your best to try and get uh, the people who have tested COVID positive, get them back feeling good about themselves initially. But then obviously from a sporting point of view, uh, we don't know how they're going to react to it. So, um no, at this stage, I was asking them, uh, you know, how, how is it these players? But it seems to be very, very random in terms of how, how it attacks. So that's the danger of this virus. Right. When will La Rochelle get back in the pitch then? How does it work? Um, it works with, I suppose, tomorrow. So I'll go for testing. It's good. We kind of have a drive-through testing set up, organised in the, in, the, in the empty stadium where you literally, you know I mean, park a car, walk in, don't... Uh, connect or, or greet or no physical kind of which rugby players like doing in terms of I suppose greeting people in the morning but that's that's not allowed and um, you you go in you go tested you straight back in your car you go home and you spend your day at home and you you meet as 
uh, the least amount of people possible. Um, and then by hopefully 10 p.m. that night, you, 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 we'll have our results. Um, and that obviously implies either plan A, plan B or plan C, depending on, on, on where we are with, um, mm. with the results. So if everyone was negative, would you be back on the pitch uh, weekend coming? You could be back in on Friday, yes, obviously, but uh, that's if you're negative. There's obviously different protocol for which, depending on what stage, you tested positive. So these guys will have a kind of essentially a return to play COVID plan. And that differs depending on when uh, you are struck down with the, mm. with the positive test. So uh, it's very, very strict and very well regulated in the, uh, in the top 14 and mm. uh, very few grey areas and um, a lot of a lot of paperwork and a lot of work from the from the medical department. And of the top 14, generally, are other teams having similar outbreaks at the moment? Yeah, they are. well, it seems to be that um, you obviously saw the Star France at the start of the season. Bayern got wiped out, Star France got wiped out. Uh, we are not at that stage, but um, it has hit an awful lot of teams yeah, at different stages. But... Um, um, None um, consecutively, or sorry, at the same time. So in that regard, mm. it, it's great that the competition is going down. And that probably leads into the point about, I suppose, why the French teams were, were very anxious about playing Europe because uh, obviously they, they could see there was a different strain in the UK and that Ireland, the cases were at a, uh, were record high for the world. So... Um, they're very proud of, of their domestic competition. So their fear was if they, <clears throat> if they, we go to, to play in England or in Ireland and we bring a strain of that virus but back, it will do uh, huge damage to the potential of playing in a top 14 for mm. which, which is, isn't under threat in any way for the rest of the season. So mm. I think uh, that was uh, a very smart move by, by the, uh, by the, I suppose, the top 14 clubs or by the LNR. Yeah, I do get the sense that a lot of the French clubs would be probably happy enough to let this season's Champions Cup just drift out to sea. No, I, I, I dispute that heavily with you. And the fact that, sorry, with the way, as I keep, I keep harping on in this show, if there's relegation, Joe, it's a different mindset. And, and if you're involved in that scrap, you've got to get concentrated on that. Uh, but if you have a chance of progressing in the European Cup, uh, the French teams love it, absolutely, and especially in the format this year, mm. it was four games to get to a quarter final. So, um, you mean the 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 squad depth and the squad uh, quality? There's a lot of teams in France who would consider themselves challengers. So, there's absolutely no way um, they would like to forfeit their opportunity uh, when I suppose. The history is obviously loaded towards the bouclier, but to, yeah. to achieve that, it's over 30 games. While you look at the, the opportunity with silverware with about eight games in Europe, the, anyone, any, all the competitors uh, playing in the top 14 would love a crack off that. Okay, that's good to hear. Sometimes you wonder if it's a lukewarm relationship at times. No, I, I, I think for certain clubs that can't have the, I suppose, the, the joy to, 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 uh, to double load their challenge. But the, the, you know, I mean, even though Claremont were beaten by Munster at home, Claremont, I would say, will have a right crack off that game in Tolman Park because they have huge history in the competition and they like the competition. Uh, Rassing are obviously contenders and Toulouse are contenders. We uh, were in the mix and um, you can be sure that we'll be, we'd be looking to, to, to put out our best... A possible group of players to represent their club to give us a good shot at progressing. Good. Well, look, hopefully things improve. I saw, I was just checking, I was watching France 24 today, so it was kind of averaging over there 10,000 cases pre-Christmas a day, and now you're up to 18,000 cases. And I saw there's a cluster of the new variant in Marseille, and as we have found out, once it gets in, it's very hard to get rid of it. But hopefully things improve to um, matters. Yeah, but it was at 60,000 uh, uh, on a daily basis for, for a number of weeks, Joe. Yeah, 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 I know. Um, well, I, look, I hope things stay that way. It's just um, our experience of this third wave, maybe, uh, you seem to be a bit ahead of the curve in trying to uh, stem it. But look, who knows, once it gets in and gets out of control at the moment, it's, it's pretty scary. Um, before the clock comes against us too much, this is probably an easy question given the esteem in which you hold Paul O'Connell, but your, your thoughts on his 
appointment when you saw the news that he's come in as forwards coach and he's going to sort out the line out and be part of the Irish setup? Yeah, brilliant news. He's um, obviously a very close friend, and um, I suppose I know I don't have a lot of time because we could chat for hours about this. Um, and we may get a chance on the big screen to do it, Joe, over the coming months. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it is a great addition, a great addition. And I think, um, you know, I think to give the, the listeners a flavour of why it is would be, it would be so inaccurate to uh, associate, you know, I mean, the magical speeches that Paul made uh, about that being the, his ace card. There are so many more layers underneath that, that... Um, He's a joy to talk rugby with. He has a massive understanding of the game. He has an awful lot of uh, empathy. Uh, he isn't a hard man. He played as a hard man. He's very soft. He's very, uh, you know, emotionally attached to, to anything he gets involved in. He's um, I, obviously, I, I couldn't speak um, more highly of, of a guy I played my essentially my whole career with. Uh, hugely challenging, yet. Um, absolutely loves rolling up the sleeves and getting involved in a project and, and, and getting the best outcome for his team. Yeah, it's a really interesting point you make about the perception of O'Connell. Never has a, you know, did you put the fear of God into them speech ever kind of pigeonholed a man, a man so wrongly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, uh, but I think, I, because I listened to it the other day as well, uh, because it was all over social media, but it, it's it's so good. <laughs> Even <laughs> maybe because I was in the training room, but it's so good and it's and it's so poly. But that's you know that's a snapshot of him for sixty seconds. But like there's another fifteen years of that multiplied by you know what I mean fifteen games at least, and then there's all the preparation that goes into it. He has so you know meticulous in in his preparation, but also. Uh, his sense of humour is, is is incredibly good as well, and I um, know oh I think it's it's uh, it's a great um, it's a great I think um, opportunity for for players uh, in Ireland to be inspired by a former great, and uh, you will say well you know what coaching I I think he wouldn't have accepted and I know from talking to him the, the opportunity if he didn't think he could do it better than anyone else in the world never mind in Ireland so I think he has a I have had detailed chats with Andy Farrell about what his role is and I, I, I would be hugely confident in saying that uh, he will absolutely perform his role with, with great detail great enthusiasm and better than, um, than than anybody I would think that would be ever presented that opportunity mm. You used the word enthusiasm there. I think there'll be a real shot of enthusiasm for players excited to work with O'Connell, either have played with him or grew up uh, watching him. So straight away, would you think, you know, I don't know how long you'll have with the players as part of training camp in advance of the Six Nations. Say if we talked about two things which have cropped up in the last year, 18 months, the line out and Ireland at the breakdown, you would imagine pretty quickly he can have an effect there or will that take time? Yeah, I would think, I would think pretty quickly as well. And... To be honest, there are two areas I wouldn't have a great um, understanding of or a great appreciation of either. And the fact that, um, you know, I, I I wouldn't have the detail around the rock that that uh, Paul would be interested in. I wouldn't obviously have the line out detail that Paul would have or, or even come close to it. But I understand uh, there are a few basics uh, required um to even enter the room to con to converse with him, and um, but I, you know, I think um, what's different, I suppose, nowadays in the fact that they won't get that much time on the pitch. But how much learning is actually done on the pitch? The video is very, very powerful nowadays, and I think in terms of connecting with the players and uh, bringing them through potential improvements, you can actually, uh, you know, what I mean. A player can your role from from training, and that would equate so many times to be, uh, you mean the game analysis. So Paul will have cut many a clip, I would say, from from, from training or from games of, of previous Irish games, and saying this is what the perfect picture looks like, or this is not what we value or what we rate ourselves around the rock. So. I think in that regard, there will be some fundamentals that he'll introduce. Um, and, and 
from speaking to Mike Prandegas, who coached him in, in Stade Francais, he was saying he's a brilliant coach and he has he makes his, his message is very simple and very clear. And mm. that's that's a that's a very, very important point with coaching. Yes, I would think so. Uh, Tommy has texted in to say, can you ask Rog if he put the fear of God into any Englishman that day? <laughs> did Paul do or did I do? Did you? <laughs> I don't. We know I, Paul did. We're not so sure about you. But we weren't even tired, was it? Was, was that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to go listen to it again afterwards. Um, Every morning. It's, it's your, it should be your, your alarm clock. <laughs> You'd jump out of bed, wouldn't you? <laughs> um, we have zero time, and I know this is a week where you did get a chance to watch all of Leinster, Ulster and all of Connacht Munster. Do you want to give me one O'Gara takeaway that jumped out at you from either game? You've got one point to make from the weekend, which I know isn't a fair ask. Um, I, I suppose the Connacht Munster game, it was just... Uh, it was... Um, just a credit to Connacht, I suppose, for staying in the fight. I thought Munster were by far the better team, but they never killed them. And it just shows if you don't kill off uh, a team with a lot of fighting qualities, Connacht stayed there. And then to give themselves the opportunity where they set themselves up for the killer blow and not to pull the trigger, they'd be desperately disappointed with that. But it was a great to see the dog back in Munster. I thought their forward display was was incredibly good and, and, and impressive. And... Um, They'll go into the into the uh, monster Leinster game with an awful lot of um, optimism. Yes, well, we might chat in a bit more detail around that game. But in the meantime, I hope the test results are all good when you get results in the next few days, Ronan. And we'll talk to you again. Cheers. Pleasure, Joe. Thank you. See you. Wednesday night rugby on off the ball with Vodafone, official sponsors of the Irish rugby team. Team of us, everyone in. <laughs> 100 Days of Walking is back. Let's stride into 2021.